when you draft somebody seventh overall and you trade up to go get them, you're hoping. You're hoping. I said this the other day after he boat raced the uh, Patriots out, that you you want, you have to win your division before you go at the King in your conference. And for, you know, Allen's final, you know, for Brady's final years there and Allen's first few years, it was one of the same, it was Brady. And, um, and, and they boat raced Belichick and he looks terrific in doing it. Perfect game, just an absolutely perfect game. But when you draft somebody, you not only hope, okay, for that, You hope that you have a guy that can then go at the king and say, I'm on par. And uh, and certainly on occasion, I'm better. And right now in the AFC, the king is Mahomes. Four straight championship game appearances to start his career. Okay. That's the guy. And last night, even though the Bills lost, and yes, they're scheme, if you will, in the last 13 seconds of regulation, a touch off to say the least. But Allen's the man. He's not just your man. He is the man. What he did in that 17 play drive, what he did on that 17 play drive, what he did in the one before it, you're down nine, and then, you know, you got to get points out of this. Is your guy going to maybe make a mistake? Is your guy going to suddenly, you know, sphincter up? <laughs> Is that what's going to happen? No, he's just going to go up top and make a beautiful, gorgeous, big-time throw. And that was supposed to be Allen, right, coming out of college, Chris? The big howitzer, remember? Big arm. Do you remember I told you big after arm. the combine I saw him throw that he faded back Remember I came back from well, Indianapolis? There was that one throw at the combine. Where, where he, he fades he, back inside his own 70, 10, lets it loose, and yeah. it landed on like the other 20, and it yeah, was a perfect was throw. Cool. He did that at a playoff game when they needed it. Touchdown. Yeah. Bomb. But it's the 17-play drive. It's that one where he not only converted three third downs and two fourth downs, he, and that two-point conversion and the touchdown, but he carried it five times himself. And he's taken wallops Knocked in the, the fourth out. quarter <laughs> yeah. of a playoff game in the crucible of Arrowhead. People are going nuts. Romo's saying that you can't even think in there. This is what he's doing on this drive. And you could see. You could see he's out of breath. Why not? He's as big as a tight end. He's as big. He's bigger than most linebackers. And he's coming for you. And he's going to run you over. And the thing that's most debilitating that he does better than anybody and I'm including Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson and all those guys and Mahomes the number of times where you think he's dead to rights and he just runs away from you and he hops over you and he makes sure that he can break out of your tackle and keep a play going five six seven eight seconds long and then dagger you Congrats, Bills fans. You've got one of the best in the league and maybe one of the all-time best. How many times can you say that about somebody? He is one of the all-time best within the first five years of, of his drafting. Seriously, Chris, give me some. Mahomes is one of them, right? Brady was another because he had won three times. And even then, people yeah, are like, didn't doing... think he was like some physical specimen. Yeah, he wasn't doing what these guys were doing. Right? I mean, who else? Lamar Jackson won MVP, doesn't have the playoff. Uh, but right now, like right, right now, I mean, this is the second season he couldn't finish. Yeah. Like sustained all-time best. You were joking about, like, so whoever does the busts in Canton should sit him down right now. I would say just get his measurements and just keep those on file. Because I'm serious. We're though. talking about Hall of Fame in 20 years for Josh Allen. Yeah. You can see what he's doing that in this game today that you need to run and you need to throw and you need to be smart you need to be accurate remember that too he wasn't accurate remember that coming out like of college 50 percent at wyoming it was bad and even his first year in buffalo bad and then all of a sudden skyrocket Look guys so his development is out of this world everybody who's and 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 everybody who's hoping to get somebody like josh allen like say cleveland and the jets had a shot at him didn't do it so I know Bills fans are feeling yeah, it today. Yeah, but because I mean, like, I, I don't, I don't want a revisionist history. The 18 draft, like Baker Mayfield won the Heisman Trophy, yes. and Sam Darnold was, was a phenomenal talent coming out of college. Like, it's, 
Daniel Jeremiah will tell him he, he was his number one quarterback. I got it. I know. So to play the results here is not fair. Like Josh Allen probably went where he was supposed to go. Oh, I'm 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 always one of those people that thinks that fate is it's what it's supposed to be and things of that nature. But, but Josh Allen was fifty two percent his first year at Buffalo. I got him. Fifty eight percent in twenty nineteen, and then went up to sixty nine. He's out of his it mind. Crazy. It's great, and that's why Brian Dayball is going to get a job somewhere, maybe with the Giants, where they say do that for Daniel Jones. Good luck. But Bills fans, I know you're bummed today, but just you got a winner. Oh my God, you have a winner, and you got some guy who will not give up, and you know, you know. That's the only way the Chiefs could have won last night was to win that toss and take it down and win that game yeah. in overtime because yeah. he was coming for you yeah. again. 13 seconds. The Buffalo Bills oh, man. decide to run like fence post defense when the Kansas City Chiefs have two timeouts. <laughs> that is egregious. Yeah. Okay, and Leslie Frazier, I believe, is D coordinator. He's done a great job. Obviously, yeah. that defense, number one defense all year. Leslie Frazier has done a great – zero pro bowlers. Huh. Yeah. Zero pro bowlers. Zero pro bowlers. Wow. Wow. But running the fence post on the outside, saying, hey, they can't get out of bounds when they have two timeouts. I, that's an interesting thing, and Travis Kelsey does it. But watching Pat just flip a switch or Travis Kelsey in that offense, what a fucking time. Go for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. I mean, other time rules we still believe are shit. Okay? Wow. And they have for some time, not just because of the game. Because we do remember the Kansas City Chiefs getting fucked Correct. in a similar situation when it changes. So this is not about Kansas City. We would just like to see... You know, overtime be better. I don't want the college rules either. No, 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 no. no. Everybody's saying, oh, give the college. I don't want that shit of that amateur Bush League stuff either. Like, I, I don't want that. It's better, I guess, if a team goes down and scores first. But at least the NFL has real football happening. Like, real situations, real strategy and scheme. And I guess the only thing is you got to get a fucking stop or let a, a field goal happen. Yeah. But on the flip side, Kansas City Chiefs deserve some, like, hey, Good on you. Yeah. They're back. Yeah. The Chiefs is the Chiefs again. Yeah. For as good as Josh Allen was last night, Patrick Mahomes was just as good, if not better. He is almost impossible to sack at all times. Last night especially. Like Connor tweeted, he had his PF Flyers on last night. Patrick Mahomes had his PF Flyers on mm -hmm. last night. And when we're talking about the overtime rules, we're not it, 11 times it's happened, case okay, in the new rules, Pat. 10 and 1. If you win the coin toss, you're 10 and 1. But yeah. We tails can't, we can't have Josh to be caught. decided on, on a coin toss. Okay? He called Tails as soon as I heard it. I thought to myself, it's a big time going toss here. Yeah, it never fails. Hope it's tails. That thing hits. I wonder if jo he did. Josh probably felt the same as I did oh, yeah. when I lost the 30,000 on the coin mm -hmm. toss that Travis Kelsey was involved in. Yeah. yeah. You know, and at the Super Bowl last year. But yeah, the coin toss can't have that much sway in things. 10 and 1, you said? 10 and 1. Nick sent in the tweet earlier today. Someone said Allen was 9 and 0 on coin toss. Yeah, yeah he's never well. lost a coin toss till yesterday. He lost both of them. Jeez. And, also, I, and I get the overtime rule, but if you have the number one defense in the NFL, like this is professional football. You either get a stop or you lose. Like, and I, I think it's more about the Chiefs. But it's team football. If it's anyone but it's the team Chiefs. football, absolutely. But you, we have talked about before the locker room, the offense, and the defense are damn near two different teams. That's what we're saying. It's team football. Yeah, so yeah. you. you they, that's their best team. That's the number one defense in football. I know Josh Allen's absurd, but it's way more credit to who the Chiefs are. He should. Be, I agree. The Chiefs are very. Let's yes. listen. The Chiefs are unbelievable. Yeah. But the overtime rule should not. Like we should be able. We got ripped off not seeing if Josh Allen would come out there and answer. Bingo. That's it. The Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes was a story. Mm -hmm. This is the story. This is the next 10, 15 years in the AFC. This is the story. We didn't get a chance to see if Josh Allen would come out and answer. And I know the defense has to get a stop. Have to get a fucking stop. Have to get a stop. But at the end of that game, Josh Allen and the offense were carrying that team at the time. I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's an interesting thing. You know, at this point, why don't they just play a full quarter? Well, that's what Hawk, or, um, uh, fuck, Hussey is the name of the ref. Mm -hmm. Good ref. John right? Hussey. John Hussey, yeah. He's very... He's talkative. He gets along. He over communicates almost. He did what, say that. When um, he said, "Yeah, we're starting a new game. Yeah. Each team gets three timeouts." Blah blah blah. Well, it's not a new game, hussy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was a half game. And the half game was if this team scores a touchdown. So because I forgot if they changed the rule for playoffs like a couple oh, years ago. Same. I, I was like from the past. That's when the last conversation was really. About when it, the yeah. Chiefs were the ones that yep. presented it, like, hey, this should not be how a game ends. Now, obviously, the Chiefs are on the other side of it, so good on them. But uh, until they put the graphic up over the thing and says touchdown wins game, I was like, oh, I guess they didn't fucking change no. the rule for the playoffs. So but instead, here we are, a coin toss into overtime. Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and the boys get the ball. They go down and score. 
score. Now it's the Buffalo Bills who yet again lose to the Kansas City Chiefs. They have played three times in the last year. Final score, cumulative score. If we're Europe, that's how sought congregative. That's right. Yeah. Congreg aggregate. 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 There it is. <laughs> Aggregated score. 198, those two teams. Pretty uh pretty evenly matched squads, yes. huh? Yes. Well, and Josh and Patrick. I think the entire team knows. Hey, our quarterback is going to be judged against this quarterback forever. This is how this is going to go. And remember years ago, who could throw the ball further? Mm -hmm. Who's more athletic? We talked to Josh last week. He said he has a good relationship with Patrick, has a lot of respect for Patrick Mahomes. He's already won the big one. But those games always live up to the hype, it feels like. And that thing ended in overtime the way it did. I think everybody's bummed about. Darius Butler's going to be joining us in like nine minutes, AJ. I guess he's not happy with how we spoke about the overtime rules being dumb. Why is that? Is that a defensive mindset that the defense has to make a fucking play hold him to a field goal get off the field your team deserves to win if you can't do that you deserve to lose is that why he's uh, thinking that you think is that a natural defensive thought i mean maybe I, I don't know like i'm just i'm just sick of the talking about rules and changing rules and i, I knew it was going to happen in so code josh Allen doesn't get a chance to touch the ball yes that's how it works it's not fair life's not fair it's football but i do like People don't know, didn't it used to just be sudden death? If you kick a field goal, you yeah. win, right? Yeah, and then they change now, it to. Kick a, yeah, now they change it to if you kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession. But if you score a touchdown, game over. I think that when I sit there and look at it, it's pretty good to me. I don't know. Chiefs fans uh, were upset that we talked about the overtime rules at all being stupid. We've been talking about the overtime rules and many other rules for a long time. Okay, that is a major part of the program. Man. Yeah, that's right. Trying to make the game better. But in this particular case, the Chiefs deserve all the accolades. They're the fucking Chiefs. The Chiefs is yeah. the Chiefs again. It was awesome to watch. But also, you know, in this fairy tale land where everything is how it should be. And I wish that that was the case. Seeing if Josh Allen could come fucking answer would have been awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, like that would have been. It would have. But the, also, they have to take into account, like, could you have, I guess, could you have different playoff overtime rules? Like, they're not, they don't want you to have one like 15 minute extra quarter because I think it's more wear and tear on the players and they're looking out for player safety. So could you change it for the playoffs? So I think the Chiefs pitched that. I think the Chiefs actually pitched that because the Patriots did this to them years ago yep. and we were left wondering, will this young gun, this young star, Patrick Mahomes, would he be able to come out and answer fucking Tom Brady in this situation in the overtime and in playoffs? I think the Chiefs actually pitched different rules for playoffs than there is in the regular season because what you just said about another full quarter – being a lot wear and tear. If you have a couple of those games, that's a whole new half. That's 17 and a half games that people are playing and the body can't take it. But for the playoffs, it just feels like we should get a chance to see somebody answer. But Darius feels differently. I'm excited to feel why that is the case. And also listening to everybody, you know, want to change rules. I can see how that can get a bit tiring. But shout out to the refs this weekend, AJ. Yeah. We gave, shout, they didn't... Huh? Yeah, they didn't decide the games, did they? No, no, they didn't make themselves the game, which a lot of those motherfuckers did for a lot of the year. <laughs> hey, I thought for sure when I saw old uh, Tyreek throw up the deuce, I was like, uh-oh, yep. they're, they're going to call. And I was so happy they didn't call it. Yeah, we all were. Actually, the first hour we talked about knowing the situation, know how knowing how big of a play that was in the moment, knowing like what the game was doing, two legacies on the line. Why would we want this flag to be the story of the game. Like, why would we want... I like the self-awareness by the refs saying, uh, nah, this is... They'll just game. act like they didn't see it, right? Don't you think they can, they'll, they can say, oh, I didn't see it. I was, you know, I was chasing the ball. I guess, but I hope whenever they get home, they actually tell their friends and family, like, yeah. there's no reason for us yeah. to fucking slow that down. Yeah. It's actually pretty sweet. Did you see yeah. him? I mean, <laughs> the guy was in front of him. He was running, he he running one-handed past the guy. I mean, he didn't even use his other hand in form, in form running. You know, he didn't even do ah, nah, excuse me. I need to say, see you later, cuz. <laughs> He's unbelievable to watch, Tyreek Hill. He's, he's so fun to watch, man. That dude's little, watching his legs work and just bounce around. And all, like he's never, he never gives up on a play, that's for sure. Well, and it's the entire Chiefs squad. They're back. Like This is what we bet on the Chiefs for yeah. every single week during uh -huh. a regular season because they have the ability to flip the switch and go. And once Patrick Mahomes starts getting the crowd and he starts vibing you know, and he's in there, are you not entertained? And him running for however many yards he ran for early there, it's just... That team is fucking awesome to watch. I wish I was seeing if Josh Allen could have came back out and did yeah, that. But hey, nice. I'd bitch about it if it went the other way, too. I had, some, right. yes. I had some people coming out. I would have bitched about it like, hey, Patrick Mahomes 
just like against the Patriots, would have loved to see him come out and answer because that's what we're inevitably going to judge these people's characters on forever. Mm -hmm. Like, can they rise to the big moment? Can they answer? And I think Josh Allen, when he had to, he went in there and threw a couple strikes. Yeah. Team that lost this weekend. The Bills were on the wrong side of one of the best playoff games in NFL history. And their coach, Sean McDermott, and the rest of the team now has to move forward and deal with that brutal loss to the Chiefs and those 13 seconds that will never be forgotten. I watched it uh, on video and I watched it over and over in my head uh, a million times uh, and in my stomach a million more. I continue to watch it in my mind and in my gut for, but when we get to where we're, where we're trying to get to, I believe that that'll be, that'll make it that much more um, enjoyable in, those mo in that moment. You know, Kmart, I've always felt you have a soft spot for the, the Bills. You covered them as a columnist for a, a period of Where time. Where am I? Buffalo Blue. Um, yeah, no, it, it, I was up there. I know I've seen this team change and the organization change, and, and they built it the right way. But it's painful for them. And, and we talk about windows all the time. Yeah. Windows don't stay open. Yes, you have the quarterback. They are ahead of the game. Can you keep the coaching staff together? Doesn't seem so. Can you keep this roster together? We will see. Those are the things. Rosters change every year, so you have to take advantage of these moments. And Buffalo, unfortunately, it's painful for them right now. Mm -hmm. They couldn't pull this one out. I, I spoke to Jim Kelly on the radio yesterday, uh, who's been through more than his share of heartbreak in Buffalo. And this might have been as bad as it's gotten, certainly since the kick that didn't win the mm -hmm. Super Bowl uh, all those years yeah. ago. Tim, let me just come to you quickly, though, because I'm curious through a quarterback's eyes. I mean, how would you describe what Josh Allen has become? The way he played in this postseason feels like it was the culmination of something, and he's still only 25 years old. What are we seeing in Josh Allen? Uh, I mean, I think we're seeing, you know, a superstar. He's already a superstar, and, you know, like, that's in some hot take. You know, we're watching those quarterbacks, I mean, it's clear, and we all have seen it because of his resume. I mean, Patrick Mahomes is great. The truth is Josh Allen is just as good. I mean, Josh Allen... You know, probably, you know, he went on the road against that team with lesser talent around him, probably with not a coach as good as, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes has around him. And what he did was, you know, bring him back with 13 seconds left. Look, I think Josh Allen is as good as Patrick Mahomes. And what, some of the things they ask him to do, run quarterback power, and then all of a sudden complete a pass down the field is really hard. Like, it just, there are not many guys being asked to do the things that they ask him to do. Is that I know I'm changing the topic here, but people are saying that's the Brady Manning of the – that's what we're hoping it becomes, right? Those two guys oh, so. year after year? So. I sure as hell hope so yeah. because that is outstanding. He is the evolution of the modern quarterback. When we started seeing athletic quarterbacks come in the league and some of, some of us got excited, we dreamed of a guy who was like this, who's built like Cam Newton mm -hmm. and can throw like Patrick Mahomes and can do all of these things. Yeah, he is as good as anyone in this league, which is why they think that they're going to have a chance, I mean, until he's done playing yeah. however this may have been their best chance because yeah. this may have been with the defense plan as well as it has like it's going to be hard to put all that together and have the right coaching staff going forward. look he the beat the best team remaining yeah they were 13 you throw <laughs> a touchdown pass to take the lead with 13 seconds left you're supposed to win yep. that's happened 62 times in the nfl the last 15 years none of them <laughs> lost it was the first team to lose from that situation in the last 15 years and then we see the highlights and he had so many like memorable plays in that yeah. game like he had too many to even remember mm -hmm. I saw that pass and I remember being shocked at how right. good that pass was at the moment and I'd forgotten about it because he made like four mm -hmm. other ones and he ran through a cornerback and mm -hmm. put him out of the game like the man is mm -hmm. something different he's a different animal he is he's special what was your favorite moment or play I mean the entire fourth quarter oh, in overtime yeah. of this game right here between the Bills and uh, the Chiefs and, uh, Josh Allen was incredible and I know everyone's been saying that they didn't deserve to to lose, but they didn't. They lost, but they didn't deserve to lose. Four touchdowns to Gabriel Davis. Like, this game was outrageous. And I think the play I was most impressed by was Josh Allen breaking a bunch of tackles and then throwing it away. Yeah, like, I mean, that's the maturity that Josh Allen has right now. The guy's a special player. He's going to be here for a long time. Look, this, this postseason, he was as good as you could be. Gracious. He became the first quarterback in postseason history to throw at least four touchdowns and no picks in back-to-back -back games. I, and he's going home. I mean, you look yeah. at the numbers, you look at the 
company that he's keeping, all the rest of the people on that screen at least made the Super Bowl in the years that they did this stuff, and, and he did not. And I think that's the right way to put this. I think for this has been coming. Right? I mean, Josh Allen came in, and he had a lot of potential, and they developed him really well, and it got to a point where, I'll just, I'll just say for myself, I won't put it words in anyone else's mouth, I thought, he's a really good player. Mm. I was wrong. He's way better oh, yeah. than I have given him credit for being. He, right now, is... He's as good as anybody. He, he may be on the verge of being the best player in the whole league. He did. I mean, he did. The, they did the thing that all the coaches say that they're going to do and want to do. That's right. Is turn a project into a Pro Bowl, mm -hmm. yeah. a potential perennial um, All Pro type player. They did it because I remember when he was drafted, I was like, he's not good. Then mm -hmm. I watched a couple of, or the first couple seasons, like, yep, yeah, he's not good. Then right. he had that great MVP level season, and I was like, man, this guy's pretty good. And, and now it's like, oh, is he the best? Like the the, the <laughs> The, the distance that he's traveled, I don't think anyone has ever gotten that much better that short of time. So credit to him, his self-awareness, and the team, the people there that are building around him and building him up. But it's the reason that his, his offensive coordinator is about to be a head coach somewhere. Yep. It's an organizational success story. Absolutely, and, and he's worked his craft. And right. to your point, he has found ways to get better each season. He'll continue to do that. But when you watch him in the biggest moments, the game is slow for him. And whether that's pulling the ball down, whether it's a call design run, or whether it's throwing the right route and against the right coverage. This guy has developed every facet of his game, and it's so impressive when you see somebody who's really trained and worked his craft get that much better. It is special. You mentioned the offensive coordinator, Brian Dable. I've talked to Josh Allen about this, and he respects the importance of that continuity on the coaching staff. He has had the Absolutely. same offensive coordinator all four years he's yeah. been in the league. He's had the same quarterback's coach, Ken Dorsey, for the last three. That is important, and he knows the importance of it. But you're right. Brian Dayball could get a head coaching job. Their assistant GM is now the GM of the Giants. The defensive coordinator is going on head coach interviews. Yeah. Buffalo has built something special that people want a part of, and Josh Allen is, is sort of the avatar of this. He did literally everything right on Sunday except call heads. If he calls heads, <laughs> we're sitting here saying, can anybody beat the Bills yes. the rest of the way? And maybe the other thing he could have done was say to his coach, hey, we should squib kick this with 13 <laughs> seconds left. And the reason is, the reason is, you don't know that you get that opportunity back. Right. Right. You know, because I'm, sure. I'm, I'm well, you are maybe too. I, I'm old enough to remember when Dan Marino That's played fire. in the Super Bowl his second year. Right. And, right. and if I had told you then he's never getting back there, you would have laughed me out of the room. Right. These things are not guaranteed. Absolutely. The coaching staff is going to break up. This was a, a, a golden opportunity with a quarterback playing better than anyone in the entire sport. And to let it get away, th that is one you never get over unless you finally win the thing. He gave you the lead yeah. with 13, 13 seconds. seconds left. Like, what else can you do? You know what happened? <laughs> With 13 seconds left in the lead, Mike McCarthy said, this game's over. <laughs> <laughs> I did, too. Like, oh, anybody with good sense thought it was over. This is as brutal as it gets. Arrington with us this morning. Good morning, LeVar. We're talking morning. Uh, Josh Allen. You know, uh, it's hard to have a better postseason than Josh Allen did. Shy of the Super Bowl, of course. The Bills quarterback, a 149 passer rating, the highest ever in a single postseason. But again, doesn't change the fact the Bills are headed home. The second straight season, the Chiefs ended Buffalo's run at Arrowhead. Allen said Sunday, we got to find a way to be better next year and accomplish what we want to accomplish. Nick, are you worried at all about the Bills' future after the way they lost to the Chiefs? I think there are three reasons, LeVar, to have a pretty high degree of concern, and none of them are about Josh Allen. I announced yesterday retiring the Josh Allen slander. He was outstanding this postseason, answered all the questions that I had. So it's not about Josh Allen, but here's why I'd be concerned. Number one is the obvious. I think you're going to lose Dable. And this is one of the unspoken downsides to having even a great head coach if he is on the defensive side of the ball is your offense is going to always be designed by a guy who, if he's good enough, is not going to be there for long. So, like, it's something Belichick has dealt with. Luckily, McDaniels came back. But the defensive coach is losing the offensive coordinator that develops a relationship with the quarterback's a real thing. So that's first point. Second point yep. is all the great young quarterbacks are in Josh Allen and the Bills Conference. So you have Mahomes, but you also have Burrow is still playing. You have Lamar, who won an MVP a couple years ago, and you have Justin Herbert. So there's going to be no easy outs. But the last one is the one that's most concerning, and that is... What was the emotional toll of that game Sunday? Wilds made a point all year long, which is 17 of the last 20 Super Bowl losers didn't win a playoff game the next year. And I think a lot of that is because 
Losing a Super Bowl is so emotionally devastating that it's hard to climb back up. I think I think Sunday was the Bills Super Bowl. I think going against the team that knocked him out last year, having the game in hand and losing it was as emotionally devastating a loss as you can imagine. And LeVar, the teams that have recently suffered those types of losses did not recover, at least certainly not the next year, maybe not for the next few years. Atlanta never recovered, I would argue. Seattle, the Malcolm Butler play, I would argue never recovered. Hell, the Bills, the Music City Miracle, they didn't make the playoffs for 18 years after it. It took them a long time to recover from it. So I do think the Jaguars make the AFC Championship game, have it won, and then lose it. Never recover. So I think it is going to be harder than expected for us all to get Mahomes, Mm -hmm. Allen, AFC Championship game part three next year. Because I think this could be a psychologically very damaging loss for both of them. I'll I'll say there should be cause for concern for the simple fact that you may not only lose an offensive coordinator, you may lose a defensive coordinator. To lose both coordinators in one offseason is, I mean, you got to assume that that's going to be debilitating to the team. Then you also got to take into consideration what their cap is, what they're at 200. Uh, million and, and they have eight million left, two hundred and eight million, yep. and they still have a a hefty uh, group of free agents that are coming up. So one of the biggest challenges that teams have in modern day NFL uh, and in sports in general is is this cap issue of being able to keep your team together. That's going to be critical. They'll get a guy back in um uh, in in white Trey White. They'll get him back from his ACL. They'll get him back from his ACL injury. I believe if they can keep the core nucleus of this group together, they can be competitive for years to come. What's difficult is when you have a good defensive coordinator, you have a good offensive coordinator, and they are being recruited to go to other jobs, there's the possibility that they may not be there. There is the possibility that people may opt out and take money from a different place and think that there's a greener pasture somewhere else. So with all things given, if the Bills come back with the core nucleus of what they've had this year, this is a team that I don't think will have a hangover. I think they'll be better, Brew. I just think that there still has to be some things that fall in place in order to keep the the, the core nucleus, as I said, together in order to, to build to that next step. But they're right there. I mean, they're one possession away from playing in the AFC championship right. game. And I don't know that they lose to Cincinnati in that game. So I think they're closer to being better than they are going in the opposite direction. Right. LeVar, yeah, you'd hate to lose either the coordinators. Dayball has been huge in Josh Allen's development. Okay, but Nick, stop it. You sound like a Chiefs fan who's trying to convince himself that Buffalo's not going to beat you guys at some point. Because Buffalo's not going away. I'm here to tell you That's that they it. are not going away. All right, look, they 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 don't lose any of their good players. None of their top players are free agents. So they should be back. All right, and this team has shown that it is mentally tough. They could have folded. If they were going to fold, if they weren't made of the right stuff, they would have folded after that national embarrassment when New England threw the ball three times and beat Buffalo at home. This or they so may have different. folded the next week when they're down 24-3 to three at halftime against the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers. Instead, they manned up and played tremendous football. They looked in the mirror and said, what are we made of? We've been punched in the mouth a few times straight in the last two weeks now. What are we made of? And they emerged yeah. to play their best football that we've seen in years. And, Nick, some if they don't respond correctly to this emotional loss, then they're not worth their salt anyway. They weren't yeah. nearly as good but, enough, good no, enough that's anyway. that's not fair. And I can point I, – even in so, Buffalo – no, it is fair. Even in Buffalo, they can look back to a team that didn't win it, but Jim Kelly – 
They went to four straight Super Bowls. Did yeah, any of the, those emotional one, losses make them say, emotion. you know what? Yep. We're not getting back. No, that's right. That's right. That's the example. Because the Norwood loss is the first one, and they recovered. Right? The Norwood was the, the absolutely unfathomable loss. They recovered and then they go to three, three times. So I, yeah, I, I understand that. I'm not saying it's impossible. But I, what I am saying is what, the Wilds, we, we saw a, this. I'll go do a different example. I'll use the Rockets with Harden and Chris Paul. They had the, the NBA version of the, of the Chiefs beat. The Warriors with Durant. And they had terrible luck. They had the worst injury at the worst time. And then despite that, they had the worst shooting slump in NBA history, smack dab in the middle of a game seven where they were up by 15. The team never recovered. That was a great team that should have won a championship mm-hmm. at some point. I This is not... Me trying, and this isn't saying taking a shot at Buffalo. This isn't me trying to speak things into existence. I promise. What I am saying is that we, that when you have the Bills were game away from the Super Bowl last year, they're up nine nothing on the Chiefs. The Chiefs then put it on them, it, and everyone understood the Bills were probably a year away. They then tell the whole world, do interviews about it. Our entire offseason is focused on beating Kansas City. Our entire goal, we are obsessed with that. They beat Kansas City and then lost. That type of stomach, I think they'd have been better off losing 35-3. to But to lose that way, it's not like losing to the Patriots on Monday Night Football. The idea that there is not a chance that that lingers and that that, is, that has a long tail of effect, I think is... I just think we have a lot of sports history. It's not a guarantee, but I think it is the folks saying, oh, just pencil this in. We'll see this again next year, maybe. Or maybe people are going to say, damn. That, you know, 28 to 3, the Falcons never got over it, ever. Nobody did. And this wasn't 28 to 3, but this was tough, man. Well, look. I hope you're right, because right now, LeVar, I am terrified of Josh Allen. I would feel more comfortable having a poltergeist in my house and the walls bleeding every morning than having to deal with Josh Allen in the AFC East for 20 years. And there's a few reasons. One, it's just pure arm strength. Like, fourth and 14, like, yeah, he's probably going to do this. He's it's just such a rocket of an arm, it feels like he can make every throw. Two, it's obviously the running. And three is this. And I, I don't. I think calling people Brady esque is is always a reach, but it, geez, it did make me think this. When you look at the other awesome performances this weekend, Stafford to Cooper Cup. Wow, Cooper Cup won the game. How about Mahomes to Kelsey and Tyreek Hill won the game. And what did Josh Allen do? Stephon Diggs had three catches for seven yards, and Gabriel Davis scored four touchdowns. In the regular season, Isaiah McKinney, who makes like a million and a half dollars, destroyed the Patriots. So the, that's the third part that I'm like, oh man, this guy's good. The fact that he is taking not superstar receivers, the superstar receiver had a, had a terrible game, but the, but regular guys in turning them into playoff heroes, led to four catches in the playoff, and four touchdowns in the playoff game is insane. I'm terrified of Josh Allen, with or without his coordinators. I think this guy is going to be a threat, and they're probably going to be better next year. I hate to say it. It hurts my Patriots heart, LeVar. I agree with you that they will be better. And and here's, here's what I'll say to what you said, Nick. The fact that you look at it as maybe a hangover from them losing the way that they did, as a former player, I could tell you right now, I would not be looking at the way they lost that game as if we're not good enough, as if we don't belong. I'm going to work harder. That's a good point. And here's here's what could work against Kansas City in in this scenario. Kansas City has come out on top the last two seasons. Kansas City has their sights set on Super Bowls. Who are we playing in the Super Bowl? You know who Buffalo has their sights set on? 